So some of you may remember last year, uh, my camera was stolen in Canada and it was because of that they decided to fly me out again. But what you may not know is that I actually hired some people I didn't know to steal my camera just so that I could be flown back out again to film the footage they took. Thing is, that the, the plan didn't go quite as it was planned. I was supposed to get the camera back. But uh, apparently when you hire thieves to do things, they do what thieves do best and they just steal stuff and they don't give it back. They actually went around the whole show and stole stuff from other people too. I didn't do it because I wanted people to feel sorry for me. I just did it because I have no morals and I'm trying to teach my kids that the best way to get ahead of life is to cheat, steal, and just be a dishonest person in general. So, um, in a related story, I recently spoke with the doctor and apparently there's no cure for my dry, sarcastic sense of humor. And uh, we're just stuck with it. <laughs> no, thank you for the Carrie and Barros, and thank you to Grant who runs the the show for flying us back out because it was really kind of a bummer that we stole our camera last year. What really happened? <laughs> D, no, I, I'm I'm making myself look bad. You want to help me? Yeah, come on. There, there's really a. Uh, Okay, you just go do what you want then. I'll just sit here and fry by myself. The show was awesome. We filmed for two days and we've got lots of really cool animals for you guys to see. And a uh, big thank you to the show for flying us back out because we were actually pretty bummed that we weren't able to share what we got at the show the year before with you. So now we finally get to. And um, yeah. I'd say that maybe it was it was worth it. Of course, the way everything always turns out the way it's supposed to. And last year, I think there weren't as many cool animals as there happened to be this year. So it kind of worked out for the best for everybody. What, what, Leia? What are you doing? <laughs> What you know? Uh, I know, I know that reptiles are, are cool and that more people should like them. Yeah. Oh, ha, 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 look at that. We are at the Canadian Reptile Breeders Expo here in Toronto and it kind of went all out. They got all these dinosaurs all over the place, man. Dinosaurs, the kids. The kids, I'm sure, love this. I mean, I love it. I bet the kids, it's a bit, great attraction for them. I think that's a great idea to have all these dinosaurs around. But I, what I've done for you guys this time, I, I made a list. I made a list. I went around the expo before it opened, and I made a list of all the animals that I thought were going to be really cool to check out. And I think that we should go and check them out. And I'm just going to show you guys lots of cool animals that are here at the Canadian Reptile Breeders Expo today. And that's what we're going to do. Does that sound good to you? All right. Good. Oh. I'm just kind of realizing that this list is actually fairly long. There's like 25 animals on the list and we might find extra stuff in here. Like, so that we might stop by tables that we don't realize and, and see. And tables more, there might be more. Tables more. Let's see what you got there. Oh, Python Evolution. Facebook, Instagram. And on my back. Morph Market. <laughs> and Morph Market. So my point is that I don't know that we can give all these animals their due time in one video. This might have to be a two part video. We're gonna find out before the end of it, all right? So with Mark Mandic's table, this is the first place, this is the first reptile breeder I knew of in Canada to be fair. So I figured this is a good place to start. And uh, Mark obviously likes orange, if you couldn't tell from his background here. And we're gonna see a snake that is also a very special shade of orange, I thought. Very, a little different than, why are these glasses on my head? I guess I'm gonna have to leave there now. Dave's rubbing off of me on this trip like no other. I don't know. Uh, Dave, stop it! So anyway, <laughs> we're here with Dave Kaufman. No, Dave Kaufman? You Dave Kaufman? I, so anyway, need, we're here I think we... you need to put down the logger, sir. I love this guy. Dude, Absolutely we got, we got awesome Gavin guy. here, man. We've been having a good time, dude. You need to come out to all, all the shows. But I know you... No, you're right. You know what? I need to come out to the UK. Definitely. I need to come Definitely. out to the UK. That's happening. Definitely. This guy is 100% genuine. Absolutely. Love this guy. Love him. Thanks, man. Anytime I look after you. Thanks, bro. <laughs> I was going to do that snake, 
And then you changed your mind because you realized I was doing it. So look at that right there. That's a Super Orange Dream Mojave Hypo. And I just thought it was one of the cleanest. I mean, Mark has a ton of animals here on the table and they're all very beautiful. He breeds very high quality stuff, but this animal just really stuck out to me. So I really wanted to show this one to you guys. I mean, you can see even behind my red shirt or in front of my red shirt here that these colors are just really quite amazing. And the cleanliness, the amount of orange blushing coming up here in the top. I mean, it's, I feel like I need to put on a black shirt. Now we got the black shirt on. I feel like you guys can maybe see what I'm talking about a little better now. These orange shades that are coming in. It's just a beautiful snake. There's, there's no two ways, ways about it. The snake is gorgeous. It stood out to me out of all the other snakes on Marcus's table. So I just wanted to show you. And I think tomorrow we're actually going to go to Mark's place and check out all of his facility. And so that'll be a separate video. And I'm looking forward to that as well. Sky Lily Nature TV. I'm going to put a link down in the description. Look at these guys drew for me. Look, it's the, it's the anime Cusco. Look at that. So the, the one thing about this expo that's different than most reptile expos is that it's actually connected to an all pet animal expo. It's like in the same building. So we got dogs roaming around all over the place as well. So you're going to be seeing, you're going to be seeing dogs in this video whether you like it or not. You might be stepping in poop. We're here with Cody at Southwest Pet. He's got a really cool snake to show us. Thanks. This is a female Moon Glow IMG Paradox that I produced this year. Uh, to my knowledge, she's the only one in the world. Um, I have some friends who produce sun glows, but never quite the, the whole uh, poor gene banger with the paradox. It's been really interesting watching her grow as all the black you're seeing along this, when she was born, it was not this saturated. So it seems like the black has been bleeding more and more into the saddles and into the pattern rather than the actual white base. Um, so if all goes well, she's going to be a cookies and cream snake in a couple years, and I'm excited to see her at seven, eight foot and as thick as my arm. So these guys actually had a few animals at their table that I wanted to show, and uh, here's a couple more. Tokay geckos are notorious for having a bad attitude, as you can see. I'm going to see sometimes if I just move pretty slowly. Show. There we go. So she'll sit there and kind of eye me up. She might make a jump for it. And if she does, I gotta be ready to catch her. The uh, Lacerta bilineata. Females keep this awesome speckly green pattern, whereas your males will almost lose it completely and get this massive broad set head comparatively. At least their bites at their size isn't bad. I had my big wet, uh, my big melanistic jewel Lacerta get me. That sucks. All right, so we're here at Serpent Exotics for our next snake that we're showing, and it's really cool. Hold on a sec. So what we have here is a Hypo Arabesque IMG Paradox. Paradox. <laughs> Paradox Hypo IMG Arabesque Boa. And I mean, just, just the difference. You know, you don't see snakes like this all the time. Look, look at the, how huge that black spot is. It's just so huge and black. I just can't remember the last time I saw something that huge and black. It, oh wait, mm. no. It's gonna be a great segment. <laughs> Huge black. Oh no, yeah, I hope you're cutting that out. What, the part where I said huge and black? Oh no, 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 that's the part that's making the segment. <laughs> hey Dave, you gotta love a reptile show that smells like dog piss, am I right? Well. Oh God, that's Oh, me. that's Dave, it's not, the, it's not the dogs, it's oh, Dave. Jeez. God, man, take a shower, bro. <laughs> Brandon from the Canadian Cold Bloods is known for his tree monitors, but the animals that stuck out to me on his table were different than that, so that's what we're gonna look at. But if you wanna see all of his tree monitor stuff, you, people can find you on Instagram, Facebook. Instagram and Facebook. CanadianColdBlood.com. CanadianColdBlood.com. And but right now we're gonna see the things that, that really stuck out to me here on this table. This is a New Caledonian giant gecko, a Lichianus. This is a kind of an island mix they refer to it as super x um i like her because she has massive pink blotches on her back she's really pretty um she's a breeder female for me uh, i have a couple of her babies over there on the table she has a couple little breeding scars on her but she's a real cool animal uh people love them pre-mixed diet right rapashi or pangea uh, or just fruit um, so really easy to care for and they're just 
you know, they're just cool, man. This little thing is called a Platosaurus broadlii, uh, a little South African flat rock lizard featured in a BBC video. That's why they're famous. Not common at all, but um, I love them. I mean, these things are super colorful, super fast. Uh, they're not the most handleable, but if you like watching your reptiles rather than holding them, they're, they're amazing. And a little project we have going uh, right now, not too many people have them. We've had successful breeding with them. Uh, over the last year or so, so uh, hopefully we can keep getting more and more and uh, build up some groups and make them more readily available. But they're just they're a real cool lizard. So Brandon was saying that people have been taking pictures of that lizard all day long, and I can definitely see why, man. That thing is sick. We just had an awesome secret conversation, shation, with VG reptiles here. These guys, these guys traveled further, longer than I did actually get it. They're from Quebec. Eight hour drive, mine was an eight hour flight, so I just wanted to give them a shout out for being awesome and making it all the way here and hanging out and having our secret conversation that yes, you guys sir. aren't good to hear about. Shout out to Cusco, he makes awesome videos. Check out our Facebook if you guys want, VG Reptiles, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook. We've got some awesome snakes to show you guys as always. She's got a nice Ultra Mel, but it's hidden in the bag. Take it easy guys and help somebody out, stay positive. And you know what? Just be nice to somebody. It's, it's the way it is, man. Yeah, I can dig that. I can dig that. So I've always thought that Axolotl was really cool. They always had them at the East Bivivarium when I'd go and visit over there. And uh, they're just such weird little creatures. It's almost like a salamander that's stuck in its like morph stage, but they get those little gills on the outside. They like flap them to breathe. And it's just cool looking, cute looking. And I, I thought that you guys would enjoy seeing those too. So, so we're here at Triangulum Exoticum. And he had something that really caught my eye over here, and I'm gonna let him tell you about it. Keel-bellied Lacertas, Gastrophilus prasina. Uh, they're often just called prasina because keel-bellied Lacerta takes too long to say. I'll get him out. He's a little bit feisty. This is a full-grown adult male, I believe. We'll be able to tell in just a second. They do a really cool thing with the, with their mouth. They have a bright red tongue and they gape as a, as a startled defense. There he goes with that mouth, see that bright red tongue? You got that long prehensile tail. And yeah, that's the male. You see those femoral pores, very distinct. Woohoo! I'm so glad I got that on camera. Good eater. I don't know if you can focus on the belly scales. You can see they're keeled, which is kind of rare in the reptile kingdom to have belly scales that are not smooth. But that's where they get their common name, keel-bellied lacerta. <laughs> These guys were uh, bred in the Czech Republic. They're quite popular and common in the European herpetoculture, but they're kind of just making their way on the scene in Canada anyways. They're, they might be more common in the US, but there's not a ton of them around. I guess pretty soon I'm going to be giving a little talk here on this stage. I wasn't expecting that, but it's happening. For all these adoring folks that want to hear me talk, everybody here is super excited about the talk I'm about to give. I don't know what I'm talking about, which is probably why they're so excited. They don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know what's gonna happen. It's exciting. I'm ready for you guys. Uh, Gavin, are you are you excited about all the all these folks that are here to hear us talk? I'm ready to spread my knowledge to everyone here. Absolutely. You guys are in for a massive treat. Jeff Hoshaw was hanging out with these guys over at the Strictly Scales booth and I, I was just really, oh there, oh there he is. And he some little baby green trees and they just are so tiny, they're so cool, they stuck out to me, I really wanted to show them. Uh, these are my little F2 Biak babies. Uh, they're doing pretty good, two months old. Uh, I think they're the only ones here today, which is pretty nice. Uh, everybody likes them and they're my favorite. Can you say hi? recover your camera here? I did not, unfortunately. So we're here at Tika Royals and they had a really nice uh, Woma Python that I thought was really cool to see. And I thought you guys, thought, obviously all animals I'm going to show you I think are cool for you to see. That's why I'm showing them to you. Duh. <laughs> so here we go. It's a little Woma Python. And this time I remembered to hit play on the camera. It's good. Or record. Either one. So we thought that maybe this snake was going to bite me, but... I think we're friends now. We are friends. We're, we're nice, we're happy, we're hanging out. We've got that beautiful Woma pattern. 
with a beautiful woma snake. This is actually, you know what, this is actually the first time I've ever gotten to handle a woma python. So this is a special moment for everybody right now. And my monitor is backwards on my camera, so every time I want to go up, I go down. Let's flip it around, see if we can't make it better. There we go, now it's a little less counterintuitive. Now we'll get better shots of the snake. Why do I feel like it could be more in focus? I don't know. I, the Womo Python, that's what happens with the Womo Python pattern though. It looks so mysterious that you can't tell if it's in focus or not. So in theory, I shouldn't have to worry about focus on this camera at all and the Womo Python will look exactly as Womo Pythons look, which is a pattern that is appar apparently out of focus. Look at that beautiful, s oh, oh, he got scared, he got scared. It wasn't my fault though. We're blaming this guy over here. He did it. He did hey. it. That hand right there. <laughs> Bitten by the apple reptile. Who, who are we pulling over? Who is the face? He's over for a cigarette. Oh, he I left us. Camera. Yeah, we don't want you on camera. Yeah, you want me on camera. <laughs> He's out for a cigarette. It's a really cool name. I mean, obviously, it's a play on, you know, Eve and all that stuff, Absolutely. right? Yeah. Biblical stuff. Biblical, Biblical, stuff. Stuff. Biblical stuff. Bitten by the apple. But the snake just whispered. And then the apple bit back. I'm not gonna think about it too hard, but it, <laughs> but it makes sense in my brain. I just can't explain it to you. I know the name. How am I looking at it? <laughs> it's California did it to me. That's what happened. It was California's fault. We should just blame. We're bitten by the apple reptiles, and they have some snakes here that I, which is a shade I've never really seen before. I just look here, look at the snakes. What we have here are Orange Dream, Enchi, Fire, Spider Clowns, and one of them has pastel. I don't know if you think you can tell which one has pastel. I surely can't tell which one has pastel. And I just was walking by and thought that they had the most amazing looking color, this burnt sienna type of copperish thing going on that I've just never really seen on a ball python, this particular hue or shade, so they caught my eye. And I came to find out that uh, they were actually just stained by coconut. So potentially when they shed out, they're not going to look like this anymore. So this is a special moment. You get to these, get to see these snakes with the coconut stains, but not without. I think we're going to have to send you a link for these guys so you can keep yourself updated and see if they keep this color after or if it truly is just coconut. Because honestly, I'm not sure if I believe that it's just stained by coconut. I think they might be pulling my chain. So I'm going to put a link down in the description so you can follow these two snakes right here and see whether or not they change color and they're just messing with me or I'm being messed with or we're all being serious and there's no jokes. So I'm sitting here with my homie Tyler and we came to the conclusion that there's no way I'm going to film this entire list in one day. Absolutely. It's not happening. So we are making this a two-part video. Tomorrow I'm going to come back around the festival. We'll get to the other half of this list. I literally got barely half the list filmed. So we have to make it two-part. We have to do it two days. I will probably wear a different shirt tomorrow, maybe. Depends on what we get into tonight, which I hear is going to be pretty wild and crazy. So I'm going to have to make sure that I don't stink too bad tomorrow. Hopefully I have time for a shower. I don't know that I'm going to have time to sleep. It doesn't matter. We're going to film part two, and it's going to be you and me the judge. You turn in for the next video, see if I seem as sane or less sane as I am today. And hungover. And or hungover. No, I'm not. Uh, no. No drinking. No drinking. I don't drink. Relying. Gavin doesn't drink. Dave doesn't drink. Tyler doesn't drink. Nobody drinks. Never once. Nobody's ever had a drink in their life. No. And we're not going to start now. Maybe. But you guys, you guys, you guys take care of yourselves, take care of each other. We'll see you on the next video. Bye, guys. Baloha. Hee <laughs> hee